Hey everyone, welcome back to Miniature Painting 101, a series of videos where I teach you all about miniature painting, as the title says. And this is part 61, which is non-metallic metal uh, silver. But in this case, it's going to be a layered uh, non-metallic silver as opposed to dusted from the previous one. So please check out the previous one. So essentially today, we are going to be painting this other Necron Warrior, non-metallic metal. And we're going to be using three colors to paint our uh, grays. So we're going to start with a mix of Abaddon Black and Administratum Gray. Followed by Administratum Gray, just by itself. And finally, a combination of Administratum Gray and White Scar to create our effect. So once again, we'll begin by giving a solid base coat of Administratum Gray and Abaddon Black, a one-to-one -one mix. And as I said, in this particular one, we're going to be layering up colors in the direction of our light source. we got to tell the tale of where the light source is in the miniature, and that's ultimately the key to, to uh, non-metallic metal. And you'll see that it will tell the story, but of course, once you turn the miniature a different way, it doesn't exactly tell the same story, but that's okay. That's what non-metallic metal is about. So the key is in the first step is once again get a solid coat of this dark gray over the miniature. And this will provide the foundation of the grays. But in this case, you'll notice that we're going to be going over with several more colors in the previous steps, uh, sorry, the previous tutorial. But uh, ultimately, we're trying to create a nice blend of colors originating from our, uh, our light source. And uh, so then we'll give it a non-oil shade, just again the recesses and to give that shading uh, into all the crevices and, um, and areas that our light will not be hitting. And uh, so that way I'll just give it a lot more detail. Yeah. So with non-oil, I give it straight from the bottle non-oil. I want it to be dark and deep in the crevices because then our next step, we're gonna go back with that original mix. So after it's completely dry, we are going to create, where we gotta decide where the light source is hitting. And once again, we'll be going from above and in front. So we'll be building up the gradients towards the top center of the model. And that way that's where the light source is hitting it and from the front. So we'll go back to our original mix of one-to-one -one mix of Administratum Gray and Abaddon Black. And what I'm gonna be doing in this case is just going over all the raised areas that will be exposed to the light source. So I'm leaving the areas between the legs, uh, anywhere in the recesses, and just parts that the light source would not be hitting. So between behind the gun, um, I'm gonna leave it the normal shaded non-oil that we just did, but everywhere else I'm going to be applying this uh, Administratum Gray. And also the areas facing, of course, vertically. Um, will be left in non-oil as I mentioned, but everywhere else will be highlighted up with this administratum gray, leaving the uh, non-oil in the crevices along the edges. That way now this step is just create the shadowing um, that which our light source is, is not hitting whatsoever. And then we're gonna be building up a gradient of grays everywhere else. So the next step, once that is done, once again, we'll just reevaluate the light source. So it's gonna come from a top and in front. So we'll start building up the gradients in that direction. So I'll be working on the face in this one, the upper torso, uh, the parts of the legs that would really expose, be exposed to the light source, and the top of the back shoulder blades that are facing more upwards because the light source would be hitting that too. And you can see now I'm focusing more on the central part of the, arm, uh, the body, the upward facing parts of the arms, and I'm just gonna do a nice gradient. The key is for this tutorial is to thin down your paints. Each one of these combinations is thinned down with, um, with thinner, a thinner medium. And for this first combination, I'm using a, I just added Administratum Gray to the mix, so it's a two to one mix of Administratum Gray and Abaddon Black. So as you see, I'm just building up very nice gradients over the body that is facing my light source. And then I'm, each step, I'm gonna focus more and more central and upwards of the model. So essentially, you'll see the gradient being formed as I go. See if the shoulder blades now, I'm just focusing on the center parts of the shoulder blades, the back of the head, and just the upward parts of the shoulder blades. So that way we're gonna build a nice gradient towards the light source. I'm gonna only focus a little bit on the legs and the feet and you'll notice that uh, they'll be left pretty dark in the end. So when that was done, I just went with straight administratum gray and repeated this process, working my way towards the more central part of the body and just imagining where the light source would be hitting. So I'm leaving a little bit parts of, the, once you get past the top of the crest of the head, I'm leaving that the darker colors and I'm just focusing more on the center of the face. 
uh, the center of the chest, and the upward parts of the arms. As I said, we gotta tell the story of where the light source is hitting this model, and that's the key to non-metallic metal. Realistic colors, and deciding where the light source is hitting, and keeping it in a consistent fashion. And using thin paints, that's another key. Because that way you get a nice blend of colors, and it doesn't look too chalky. And then next, I just added some white scar to the Admin Gray, so a one to one mix of Admin Gray and white scar. And once again, just focus on some parts of the light source sitting. So the outer part of that leg I realized should be a little bit lighter because my light source was actually hitting it quite well. So I just, uh, the upper part of the thigh I worked on as well. And I did go back and, and uh, go with a little bit of the Administratum Gray mix afterwards as well to blend it. And I'm focusing, as I said, focusing on the top parts of the hands, the top parts of the arms, and just uh, anywhere my light source would be hitting. I did put a little bit of a focus on the legs in the previous steps. I, it was just done off camera. for the shoulder blades, just building up a nice gradient towards the top of them, back of the spine, top of the head. And then I just added a little bit more white scar to the mix. So it's a one to two mix. And I just did an edge highlight of the head, the edges around the face, the collarbone, and some of the parts, the upward parts of the arms, since they would be hit by the light source the most, and the center parts of the chest. And that's it. That's essentially working with non-metallic metal and uh, building up a nice gradient, layering it on. Essentially, you got to choose your focal point and consistently paint a gradient towards it and just you keep adding lighter colors in the mix of the grays and you get non-metallic metal. As I said, one of the good steps to this is just make sure that the model when you're painting it is facing vertically Try to keep it as vertically as possible because that way it's easiest to imagine what angles are, sorry, what parts of the model the light source would be hitting. And just focus your light on the model and just observe where it's hitting and then paint accordingly. And that's it. So here's the model completely painted. And as you can see, there's a nice gradient of colors ranging from the deep shadows, which are just the non oil administratum gray black mix. And uh, once we turn the model, you can see that there's a nice gradient of colors and that. As we go away from the light source, the colors are darker. We've told the story correctly. And that is how you paint non-metallic metal in a layered fashion. Remember, the key is to use thin down paints, choose light source, paint accordingly. And use as many colors as possible. Actually, the, most, the more shades you use, the more realistic the gradient will be and the, the better effect it will be. So as always, thank you very much for watching this episode of Miniature Painting 101. Really hope you enjoyed it, and stay tuned for part 62, which is just around the corner next week as always. But if you don't want to wait, check out the warp. Click on the link below for a free 14-day trial to my premium YouTube channel, where not only will you get to see the next six months worth of Miniature Painting 101 episodes, you'll get to see over 50 start-to-finish painting tutorials, an Airbrush 101 series, battle reports, face-off episodes, and just some awesome wargaming content. So go ahead and check out the warp. I think you'll love it. And thank you very much for watching. Until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting, everyone.